Welcome to the Board Game Network. I'm going to be explaining how to play this game called Mystic Veil, vale, put out by AEG. And John D. Clare was the designer. This thing plays two to four players in about 45 minutes, and it's a deck building game. Except for you're not building the deck, you're building the cards that are in the deck. You, all, you start with 20 cards in your deck, and at the end of the game you'll have 20 cards in your deck. So you don't change the cards, you, cha you build the cards. And so here's what you start out with in your deck. Everybody takes a different backed deck. And the first time you play, you have to sleeve everything, which are, there's plastic sleeves provided in the box for you, even some extras. But you start out with nine cursed lands, and you'll notice there's three at the bottom, three in the middle, three at the top. They have a blue symbol and a red symbol on them. You got nine of those. You got three fertile soils, one at the top, middle, and bottom, and they just have the blue symbol. Those are mana symbols. And then you've got eight cards that are completely blank. And so you're just going to take those and shuffle them up. You're going to pass out, mix up these blue tokens here, and pass them out. And then you flip them over to the back side. And whoever has the, the star is the starting player. So you want to make sure that based on how many players you have, that one is in the mix. When you start the game, the number of victory point um, tokens that are out is based on the number of players. The number of level one cards here is based on the number of players also. So just check your setup for that. Uh, the number level, the level two and the level three cards, you just play the whole deck on. And the difference is you've got a single dot for level one, a double dot for level two, a triple dot for level three. And then your veil cards, you just mix those up and set those out. And these are mixed up also. The, these are level one and they have a one on them in the lower left hand corner. And the level two has a two, a Roman numeral two in the left, lower left corner. So you mix those up, flip four up. And so you mix your deck up. You've got two really good, or a really good reference card front and back here. One of them shows you all the icons and tells you what they are for. And then one of them shows you the different turns, different phases in the turn. So you start with the planting phase, and all you do on your planting phase is you either push or you pass. So I get these all mixed up. And what you do is you flip up a card, and, you, and you, there's four different areas. You've got your deck, you've got your discard, you've got your on deck, and you've got your field. So right now I've got my deck. I flipped up a card, it goes on my on deck. And then if I decide I want it to put it in my field, I put it there, flip up a new one, and that's a fertile soil, and I put it there, flip up another fertile soil, I put it out. And you keep doing this until you've got these cursed lands that have has the red symbol on them. You do never want to see four of these red symbols. If you see four of these, then you lose the planting phase, you lose the harvest, and you skip all the way to discard. Your planting phase ends, you skip your harvest, and you go to discard. There is one benefit of doing that. Um, if you do that, this tile here flips to the blue side, and that gives you one additional mana, which is these blue symbols. You can actually use that as an additional mana symbol to buy things out here. All of these things have a certain cost to them. So I'm going to keep flipping. Okay, I've got to two red symbols, and I've got my third one. I put that in my on deck, and then I can decide, oh, I, I think I can go farther and put it out here. But if I ever see three of those red symbols, then, then I'm going to have to skip my harvest. So I'm going to play it safe, leave that in my on deck, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, and I don't have that. So I've got five mana symbols. And so I look around, and this one costs, here's my cost on it, it costs two. Uh, this one costs four, this one costs two. And then the higher level ones cost more, typically, there. So I could just say, you know what, with five, I am going to purchase a Wellspring. Now, I also need to get my...
So, with my five mana, I can purchase anything out here that I can afford, and I also have a deck of fertile soils, and the fertile soils cost two, and you can just go through them and pick out whichever one you want, or more than one. You can only do per two purchases of these cards here per turn, and you can only do two purchases of Veil cards per turn. So, let's say with five I want to purchase, uh, let's purchase a seedling, and let's purchase a fertile soil. And I can go through and pick out which, which one I want. And then what you do is you put, you actually put those in sleeves, so you're actually changing the cards. And then those get picked up, go to the discard, and then, so the harvest phase is when you purchase. As long as you do not spoil, as long as you don't see four of those red cards, you count up your blue symbols, and you count up your spirit symbols, which you don't have any at the beginning of the game, but some of these cards provide spirit symbols. Here's a green icon, here's a brown icon, they're they're listed back here. And you'll notice the circle is a wild, so it counts for anything. And if you see a multicolor circle, that means anything can pay for it. Any symbol can pay for it. So for me to be able to buy any of these veil cards, here's the cost on the veil cards. It shows you, and once you've spent one of those icons off of your card, you can't spend it over again for a different card because it's spent for that turn. So you have to be able to get some of these cards that provide these icons, these spirit icons, so that you can buy the Veil cards. So I didn't buy any Veil cards this turn, or I, didn't ha I couldn't buy any this turn, and then I jump to discard. And when that happens, you flip more cards out, you replace any of the cards that got bought, and if your phase one, your level one cards uh, run out here, then you just simply replace your spaces here, your empty spaces with level two. If you got level two spaces, you replace them with level three. And the same thing on your veil cards. Okay, so that goes there in my discard. The next player can now start his turn with his planting phase, and then I go to my prep phase, and all I'm doing is I'm doing essentially my planting phase over again, where I start flipping cards, and counting how many red symbols I have. And now I'm at three, so I may want to stop there, or I only have two mana tokens. So I can push if I want to and go to another one, and I just flipped a fourth red symbol, uh, which tells me that I spoiled, so the other player is done taking his turn. It comes back to my turn. I have done all of my, essentially I've done my planting phase here. And I can't do a harvest. I can't buy anything. But since I spoiled, I flipped that blue side up. These get discarded. And I go into my prep phase. The next player goes into his planting phase. So I'm going to flip up flip up <laughs> three cursed lands in a row nice and then another cursed land four in a row okay so I'm just gonna stop there and the next player gets done next player comes back around to me and it's my turn I've got three mana symbols plus my fourth one and let's say I want to buy a wellspring now anytime you buy these they have to be legally playable you can never put one of these pictures over a picture that's already on your card. So they have to work so that you can have up to three pictures on a card. The only time that's an, there's an exception for that is these ones that are along the side. The ones along the side, they can be put over the top. Some of them just have simply have that strip and they don't have a picture there. And so you could put something over the top of one of those or you could put that one over the top of another one that has that strip. And these are things that happen when the card comes into play. Now the card comes into play when it comes out into your field. It's not in play when it's on deck. The only thing on deck that matters is the red symbols 
or the green symbol, the, not, the, not this green symbol, but there's a green tree, a growth symbol, and that growth symbol essentially subtracts one of your red symbols. So you can actually get more than that red symbols out there. So let's say I bought that. I go into my discard because I don't have anything else I can do. The next player goes. We flip up a new card here. There's one of the tree symbols that subtracts. So these symbols over here is what this card provides. And this is a benefit here too. And you have to watch because some of these have things that are written on the picture. So when you're flipping these down and covering them up like this, you can actually cover over something and you have to remember that you can do it. So I ran out of cards, so I just reshuffle and continue to go. So I don't know, I may want to stay there. So that's how this game gets played. You play anytime you let's say I have this card in my in my deck. So when it comes over like this, that shows victory points. So I actually get three victory points just for having that come out in my deck on my field. Uh, this allows me to buy something that's got the star symbol on it over here. And there's nothing with just one star, but there's like a star and the green symbol. So if I had this and let's say I had that one, so those flipped up, then I could buy this. Now once I buy this, I can't use it this turn. It, I can use it on my next turn. And they usually provide something. It says, if you were to spoil, you may discard this card to gain one of the green tree things that reduces my red thing. So you actually have to get rid of it to do that one. Uh, a lot of these have just a gray VP token symbol in the lower right-hand corner. So that just counts as VP at the end of the game. Some of these say, this says harvest gain one of your green spirit symbols. So it allows you to buy other ones. So some of these allow you to, to buy other veil cards. Gain one permanent growth symbol. And it says you may not have more than one copy of this card. So it <laughs> subtracts one of your curses, cursed lands red symbols there. So, you know, that's essentially how you play this game. You're passing or pushing. Um, and watch for your reference cards here because they essentially tell you everything there is to play in this game, everything there is to do. So you play until you run out of tokens. And then um, whoever, you go ahead and finish the round based on who the first player was. You go ahead and finish the round. And so anybody else that needs VP tokens, you're just going to get them from the box, the leftovers from the box. And you're going to count up your VP tokens at the end of the game. Plus you're going to count up your deck, any that are in your field, any you're on deck. All of these, your veil cards, you're going to count up all the victory point tokens in there too. All those gray ones. You are not going to count these ones that are on the left that you get when you play the card. You're going to count the gray ones that count at the end of the game. And then you simply total that up and whoever has the highest total there is going to win the game.
So just make sure when you're playing these cards into your field, there are some things that have abilities that when they come into play, they do something. So some of them let you discard a card in your field. So when you play that, you can choose to discard a cursed land and flip over more cards. This one says this card is worth one victory point at the end of the game for each. And uh, it shows you a whole bunch of symbols on this card. So it allows you to, whatever symbols you put on the other two spaces in this card, you get victory points for that at the end of the game. So there's all kinds of little symbols running up there, or abilities running up the side. It says when played you may discard any other card in your field. So let's put that one on a card and show you how that works. So let's stick it on this card here. Let's say this is my deck. So I'm going to flip that up on deck and then comes into play. Well, discard any other card in your field. That does not much of an advantage there, is it? Uh, it provides me the two blue. Uh, but let's say that it comes after I play a cursed land here and then it comes out and then I play it. Well, that would allow me to get rid of a cursed land into my discard. So it reduces one of the red. Probably that's what you're going to use it for is to get rid of red, the red symbols. Um, anyway, that is how you play Mystic Veil. Vale. It's a brand new game. Uh, just came out here this year. Uh, make sure you tune into all of our videos here at the Board Game Network. Mm -hmm.